This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey, Noah here. In this video, I want to do a tribute to the unique designs and architecture of Studio Ghibli by designing a farmhouse for Chef RPG inspired by houses seen in the Ghibli movies. I'm going to show the entire process from concept to floor plan design to the interior design, so let's get started. The first thing to do when starting an architectural design is to do a site visit. I left a fairly large clearing for the space that will eventually be a farm, and I think it would be good to put the farmhouse right up against the northern edge of the map. The farmhouse will be designed for a family of four, two of which are Anna Mei and Mei Lu, who are main NPCs in Chef RPG. They are twin sisters, but with completely opposite personalities. So one of the design challenges for this project would be to create unique rooms for each sister that match their identities. Furthermore, their elderly parents also live in this house. So we need to design a house that facilitates the lifestyles of all these people, drawing inspiration from the Ghibli movies for its decor. One of the recurring themes in Ghibli films is the idea of environmental preservation. The plots often involve machines and industrialism causing harm to nature, but there's often a resistance by the characters to preserve the natural environment. So it's important for a Ghibli-inspired house to show this aspect of embracing nature. Now, I've always loved designs of moss-covered architecture because they give off this amazing fantasy vibe, and this house from Kiki's Delivery Service is a prime example of that. The house itself is a fairly standard traditional European house, but the moss on the roof and walls really make it unique. Usually in architecture, you want to design the building from inside out, meaning you do the massing, then the floor plan, and design the exterior afterwards. This is a good way to design as it ensures your plan is highly functional and efficient. However, in certain cases where the exterior look is extremely important and a unique design is highly desirable, architects often do the opposite and design from the outside in. In this case, starting with an exterior concept sketch of the building and figuring out the interior afterwards. That's what I'm going to do here. After a couple of different iterations, I arrived at this concept where the roof has a slight curve, meeting at a high point in the middle. The roof slopes further down on the right side, almost touching the ground. We will have wooden beams on the front face to highlight the house features. The entire roof will be covered by moss, and having the sloped roof allows the moss to join the ground to create a seamless transition between the landscape and architecture. There will be a metal chimney on the left side, and finally a detached grain silo on the right side. Now that we have this sketch, we can throw that directly into Photoshop and begin the drawing process. Super quick, I'm just tracing the lines and blocking out the major colors. I want to try a white stucco wall here, since it would contrast pretty well with the moss roof. To start to give some depth to the drawing, let's draw out the wood frames and add some shadows and highlights to give it more three-dimensionality. We don't necessarily need this, but adding a staircase allows you to draw more attention to the center of the building and helps to create a transition between the grass and the architecture. Now let's jump into creating the grass roof. It was a simple matter of blocking out the big shapes and shadows first and slowly begin working in the details. Finally, the building currently hits the ground with a flat edge, which doesn't look good in comparison to the organic grass roof. So we can do the same thing here and have the grass climbing up the walls to completely cover the house with nature. Now it's got more of that seamless look we are going for. If we look at the house in Kiki's delivery service, an important detail that makes this house so unique is that thin layer of moss covering the vertical walls. I think adding this to the farmhouse with the addition of some flowers for color can really bring out the fantasy atmosphere. Now that the grass roof is done, let's finish up the grain silo. With drawing pixel art brickwork like this, it's always good to start with the brick line work and then breaking the repetition by using multiple brick colors and lighter highlights to give it more of an organic and natural look. And it also gives the drawing more depth because some pieces of stone will look like they are sticking out. It's important to erase a lot of the initial line work since it can start to look heavy and can draw too much attention. After adding in a few more details, the exterior is all done. Now let's jump into the interior. Since we are designing the house from outside in, we can design a floor plan shape based on the exterior house shape. Looking at the exterior, we can see that the house is really just a big rectangle. Making note of where the door and windows are, we can begin to develop a floor plan. So with any floor plan, it's important to identify the prime real estate, meaning the areas with the windows and views. 
and this is where spaces like living rooms and dining rooms go. Another important part of designing a floor plan is to think about what a person will see when traveling through the house. As an example, when you first enter the door, you don't want to be facing a wall because it makes the house feel enclosed and blocks light flow. Instead, you want a direct view straight down the room and preferably be facing a window so you get a continuity of light and views. Keeping this in mind, we should avoid any obstructions to this central line of sight and design the rest of the house around it. Since this area is a prime space, we should have the living room, dining room, and kitchen here. The bedroom for the parents and the bathroom can be on the ground level. They are more intimate spaces, so they can be kept over here on the right side. A common place to put a living room is right next to the entrance. And then we can place the kitchen on the top right side, a stair here in the middle, and of course, avoiding the central line of sight, and finally having the dining room in the corner. This is a fairly standard layout. To create that Ghibli feeling we are looking for, we will need to rely on the interior design, the use of color, and the placement of little trinkets and objects around the house. The reference I'm using for the interior is the house from the movie Arietti, which is actually one of the few Ghibli movies I haven't watched yet, but I did come across this amazing house when I was doing some research. What's unique about this is the amount of color and variation in the interior design and the amount of plant life that exists indoors. One thing that really stands out here is the wallpaper. If you look closely, there's multiple different wallpapers placed on the same wall face. These days in modern architecture, we don't really think about wallpaper since it's all about showing off raw materials and using minimalist design. So it's pretty fascinating to look at a totally different style that's the complete opposite of minimalism. Before jumping ahead, I want to take a minute to talk about our channel's first sponsor, Squarespace, a great platform for hosting and building websites. I've actually been planning to use Squarespace to build the Chef RPG website before they reached out to me because I knew that they had so many well-designed templates to work from. What surprised me was the amount of customization available and you can mix and match different templates to create pages suited to your needs. They have a great automated image scaling system so I never have to worry about if images or videos are cropped incorrectly. Scrolling down, we have a system for collecting emails, which can be linked to Squarespace's emailing system if you ever need to send out important updates. They also have great portfolio tools that automatically adjust layouts, which allowed me to create a screenshots page where you can click and enlarge individual images. It's definitely a useful platform for artists and designers looking to create an online portfolio or game developers looking to make a website for their game. If you are interested, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash pixelarchitect to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now back to the video. Now that we have the floor plan sketch of the interior, we can begin drawing it out with pixel art. Again, I'm just setting up the scene by blocking out the major forms and rooms. The windows and the kitchen block are the only things on the wall that we need to draw. Now that we have the general shape of the wall, we can experiment with some wallpaper. And I want every wall in the house to be totally covered. To be honest, I think it doesn't matter too much what's on the wallpaper, but I'm just sketching some things off the top of my head that could match this fantasy farmhouse theme. Things like flowers, leaves, crystals, and vegetables. Pretty much any traditional looking designs could work here. These wallpapers don't look super good by themselves, but I think the power of wallpaper is that it's used to set the color and mood, and can be really transformative if you combine it with furniture and plants. After the wallpaper is ready, it's just a simple matter of cropping it into the walls. So I think it does give off a really interesting look. There's definitely a lot more color. It's hard to tell how effective this is without anything else in the scene, so let's draw the rest of the objects. Let's use a rustic wood floor to match the style of the Arietti house. For the washroom, we'll use a blue tile floor so it doesn't look too dark. The staircase leading up to the second floor will be fairly simple. Since this is meant to be a simple rustic home, there shouldn't be some big fancy staircase. For now, the scene does look a bit drab, mostly due to the dark floor. I'm going to try to fix it by creating some different carpets to brighten it up and we can fine tune the colors later to improve the atmosphere. After we've drawn in all the furniture, a key part to making these scenes more immersive is by having a lot of different household objects to make it look like someone is actually living here. 
I like to take a red brush here and just quickly sketch out any ideas that pops up. So here we can put a hat on top of the drawers. We need some books in the bookcase. We need some pots and pans on the kitchen shelves and maybe a cutting board below. So it looks like someone is in the middle of preparing a meal and it would be great to have a pot of stew on the stove. As mentioned earlier, what makes the Ariadne house so unique is the abundance of houseplants. We won't put in as many plants in this house since it would start to become obstructive to the pathing. But we can definitely put plants all around the boundaries of the room, next to the windows and walls. Up on this right side shelf, let's put a ton of cups and glasses, and maybe a basket of vegetables on the counter. This is one of the cases where the more stuff there is, the better it looks. So that looks about right. I'm not going to show the process of drawing every object because that would make this video way too long. But after finishing the objects and adjusting some of the colors, here's what the final ground floor scene looks like. So the wallpaper definitely adds a ton of personality to the room. I guess if you try to use interior design with wallpaper, you have to be careful with it not being too colorful and drawing too much attention. In this case, the wallpaper doesn't jump out too much and seems to balance well with the rest of the scene. So the second story will have the bedrooms of the two sisters and a bathroom in the middle. Based on the exterior design, the second level is almost like an attic, sandwiched between two sloping roofs, and there will be just one window on each end. There's not much we can really do architecturally because of how constrained this floor is. This will be another instance where we will need to rely on the interior design and the objects to make the scene more interesting. I'm going to use the ground level as a backdrop and trace out the footprint for the second level so the sizes between the two levels will match. After that, just following a similar process as before and drawing out the walls and blocking out the major colors. Finally, because the second floor is almost like an attic, we can make the walls slope down like this, which creates more intimate spaces as compared to the ground level. Now that we have this space to work with, we can get into designing the rooms for the two sisters. Because each sister has a different personality, I want to cater the design to match their hobbies and interests. The first sister is Anna Mae, who is a gamer and loves digital art. So her room shouldn't look like the rest of the house, with all the rustic furniture and the flower wallpaper. For her, we will need to create a whole new design to match her personality. Starting with the wallpaper, I'm again just drawing some patterns off the top of my head. I noticed that if you draw some random forms like this and mirror it on the X and Y axis, it can create a cool pattern. And after making a couple more wallpapers, we arrive with this final design. So I think an emphasis on black and neon blue could be cool here, and it gives off this cool sci-fi digital vibe. Let's assume that she's really into gaming culture, so she will have a couple posters on the walls. We'll write gamer on this poster just in case anyone is unsure. The posters function the same way as the wallpaper where they're primarily used to set the mood. It would be great for the furniture to match her personality as well. So I'm going with a cyberpunk aesthetic using the colors blue and orange which typically look nice together. It gives the whole thing a spaceship feel. And it would be cool to have this little demon guy in the poster on these pillows. I think we can make this cute little guy a recurring character, sort of like the Pikachu equivalent in the Chef RPG game world. I'm quickly sketching out the rest of the furniture and objects to get a better sense of what I need to draw. We want a computer for her to work and play games. It would also be nice to have a TV here in the corner for some console gaming, and we can even have a beanbag. We might be able to fit a couple storage containers in these corners, but they might not be necessary. Now, you can't be a gamer without a cool looking gamer chair. I really like the look of the bed with the orange cushions and the blue frame, so we can use the same style for the chair. Next, let's make the computer table. Curved screens seem to be all the rage these days, and we will probably see more of them in the future. So I ended up creating a curved computer screen and ended up painting the computer white, which kind of looks like a Mac now. I think it works well in this room, even though the color is totally different and we can make a little plushie of the cute demon Pac-Man from the poster. We can finish up with the TV set and the gaming console. I might make some sort of animation here in the future so it looks like there is a game running. And that's it for Anna May's room. Looks like a pretty decent gamer setup and I'm really liking the orange and blue color palette. For now, I'm not going to add anything else into the room to avoid visual clutter and I don't want the pathing to be obstructed too much. Now for May Lu's room. She's more of a traditional farmer girl and she likes to read in her spare time. So her decor will be somewhat similar to the rest of the house. We can use the same wallpapers and create some rustic furniture for her. 
Not much to say here, just a cozy little bedroom with some bookshelves and a place to sit. So yeah, that's about it for the two bedrooms. After we add some dark and light overlays to the walls and floors, the scene is complete. Looks like a really cozy house so far. Let's import all these assets into Unity and see how it looks in the game. Walking up to the house, it looks like it's got a nice blend between architecture and nature. I think these flowers on the wall moss really make a big difference in creating a picturesque fantasy vibe. If you notice, I've also redrawn the trees and created some new animated grass. Having this animated grass everywhere seems to help make the game feel less static, and I'm looking to add more animations to the environments over the course of development. Eventually, I might redraw the pine trees, cause right now they don't quite match the new aesthetic. Entering the house, we get treated to a nice change in color and mood. I think it would look even nicer with some animations like a boiling kettle or some animated plants. And it would feel much better with people wandering about, but we are currently in the process of completely overhauling the character designs, so I don't want to make any new characters until that's ready. For now, I added some doors that you can click to swing open. I'll probably add some sort of prompt that pops up so you know if a door can be opened and which key to press. So let's check out the upper level. So here we are, and personally, I actually like the upper level better, probably because this A-frame ceiling has more charm than a flat ceiling. Here's Mei Lu's room with a more traditional design. And walking down here, we have Anna Mei's room and her gamer setup. I really like the color and atmosphere of this room. I'll probably refer to this when designing sci-fi interiors for the more futuristic parts of the game world. My hope for Chef RPG is to create that slice of life feeling, where the game is fun even if you don't complete any tasks, but just wander around the world and socialize with the locals. To achieve that, it does involve a mountain of work because it requires that all the NPCs having different daily activities and unique dialogues. I'm still in this weird stage in development where I want to redraw a lot of the old art, but there's also a million other things I need to work on for the game. So hopefully all that will be sorted over the next few months. But we've still made a lot of progress, and I'll be doing more Chef RPG devlogs to show the new features soon. Anyways, really hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.